Hey guys, what's up? Shekhar Suman here from Biotechnica. In today's video, we're going to talk about direction. You know, on, on the first day of my bachelor's, after the first introduction class, I turned around and asked my colleague, my friend, my classmate, what's the point of doing this course? Where am I going? What should I do? <laughs> well, that was not the YouTube era and that's where we had to rely on friends. But in today's era, thankfully, we have YouTube and we have all the experts around who can guide us, mentor us, tell us the right path. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about biotech career ladder. A direction in which is specified and widely accepted by biotech and pharma companies across the globe and India as well. Now, if you already know these path, this path, if you know, all you have to do is go forward and achieve the targets. Well, what if I tell you that these paths will, you know, knowing these paths will give you the courage, the uh, focus, the determination and the motivation to move forward and pursue your degree. So I think this is a very crucial, very important video for all of us, for all of you. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so here at my back, as you can see, we are going to talk about biotech curry ladder. Possibly this video can become a little longer. However, I'll try to keep it as crisp and concise as possible. So there are 11 steps to your biotech career ladder. The first step is why you should know this. The reason I already told you, you will get visibility and clarity. Now, if you have the visibility, if you have the clarity of thoughts, then only you will have the confidence to pursue the course which you are into, whether you are in BSc, MSc, PhD, postdoc. If you know, okay, after doing this, this is what I will get as a reward or as, jo as a job, then you will you know, feel like doing it. The next is it will reduce your frustration. You will um, you not be frustrated that I studied so much and I didn't knew the path, otherwise I would not have done it. And you will know a definite progression plan ki bhaiya kis raste jana hai what will be my progress what milestones i'll achieve if i keep doing what i am doing today <laughs> so without uh, much delay let us start with the first step which is intern now what is intern this is a much abused word in the industry actually but to start with somebody who is still a student but wants to get into in the industry and have a you know hands-on experience of how the industry works, intern is a good starting point. But as a biopharma intern, you should know there are three types of internships. Paid, where you are paid, okay? They pay you a stipend. Unpaid, where they don't pay you anything, but they allow you to work. The third is where you pay to the company. Now, many students get confused that when I'm doing an internship, the certificate is most, most important. No. Certificate is just a proof that you did your internship, but your knowledge, your applied knowledge, hands-on knowledge and experience and conceptual theoretical knowledge is what is important during the internship. It is not at all important whether you got the certificate or not. As long as you have the knowledge, that's ma that matters. So please don't get confused whether it is paid, unpaid or payable. Absolutely no problem whether it, whether you have to pay for the internship or whether somebody is paying you for the internship. As long as you, you are learning, fair enough. Fair and square. Let, let's move on to the next and important step in the career ladder, which is, which is junior research assistant. Now, I have a lot of pointers under every you know uh, step. So I'm going to explain in detail. The first one is it's an entry level position. So you get started as a, you know, CSI net qualified, you know, um, uh, junior research assistant. Pre freshers are preferred here. You must be well versed with uh, conceptual knowledge and hands-on knowledge. So now a lot of people get confused that I should go for hands-on knowledge straight away. No, first build on your conceptual knowledge. Once you have the conceptual knowledge, then go in the lab. Otherwise, once you go in the lab, you'll be like, karna kya hai? right? So that's where you should be well versed with these two things. If you qualify CSI net or GATE, it will be 
you know um, added advantage for you the job responsibility which you will get there as a junior research assistant will be lab support work assisting in the r&d work maintaining the lab safety and of course data recording so that's your basic job this is a very basic job it's a starting job now what are the salary you you'll, it, you'll get it starts at 22k it goes up to 30k some companies i'll tell you they they are very notorious they'll start at 8000 rupees okay please don't join there somebody is paying you you know in that range 8000 10000 please don't join there that's a you know harassment for a msc level minimum they should give you about 20000 minimum i'm talking the worst case scenario so 22 to 30 is what will be a starting salary there the job duration that means you will once you get into this career ladder you will stick to this you will have to stay here at least for 2 years before you get promoted now to get promoted to senior research associate which is the next step what you have to do let's talk about that now generally phd freshers are preferred here msc people who uh, progress from junior research assistant yes they also get upgraded here msc with 1 to 2 years of prior experience will get to senior research associate now the responsibilities is conducting the experiment okay so you are actually conducting there you are monitoring the experiment here you are conducting the experiment you're reporting to the primary investigator analyzing and uh, data and writing reports and of course other uh, various other uh, duties will be there now the salary range which will be there is 30 to 42000 per month so that's the salary range i'm talking in indian rupees okay now at this level you will stick at for the next 3 years so for the next 3 years you're going to be at this particular level which is senior research associate once you have gained experience at this level then only you are promoted to the next level which is assistant research associate now what is assistant research associate your job is now to oversee the sras and jras okay so basically you are going to oversee these guys and the interns so you are going to oversee now the education required here is msc with, with 2 to 3 years of experience or a phd degree with 1 to 2 years of experience so basically whatever experience you gain in the previous level will be helpful here okay now salary as it is mentioned 35000 to 55000 rupees per month and duration will be 3 to 4 years that means once you are into this place you will have to be here for the next 3 to 4 years before you get promoted so 3 to 4 years is the number which you have to stick to this level of the ladder so once you have got here after this the position turns to associate scientist now from the associate you become the associate scientist so you you get to a scientist level now what is the detail of this now obviously you are overseeing the previous the junior uh, operations that means A- ara sra and jra so these people's uh these positions you are overseeing and then your uh, you know uh, education qualification should be 5 years okay it should be 5 uh, years uh, with msc or 3 years with phd or a direct entry you can get here at as a post doc so if you are a post doc direct entry into the scientist you get at this juncture so that's associate scientist the salary ranges from 45000 indian rupees to 70000 indian rupees per month however it varies from company to company i have given you a range which will give you a better understanding of the ladder now duration will be generally you will have to be you know stay at this level for the next 4 years now here are some growth hacks which i will give you for, if you are associate scientist or if you are joining as associate scientist the first thing if you have a phd or a post doc you can directly gain entry here okay and the second is phd degree from a premier institute on a trending topic will help you okay so suppose you are doing a phd on a crispr topic or uh, ng so something which is latest that will help you gain entry as a scientist here directly so that's a great hack growth hack i can give you here so that's about associate scientist now once you have been promoted from associate scientist you become a research scientist now as a research scientist it is a crucial role so you know you need to have a well lit research backgrounds with patents and lot of research papers published and the educational qualification is obviously you you should have a phd or a post doc with 4 years plus of experience now post doc with 3 years of experience so phd with 4 years and post doc with 3 years of experience are given a position in the industry called as research scientist now salary ranges from 60000 to 1 lakh rupees and that this is i'm talking about 2022 adjusting to inflation in future it will increase it will definitely definitely not decrease but some companies are notorious they you know offer you less salary please don't accept that now duration you will have to stick to this particular level at uh, you know for the next 
six years or so. Okay. Now the growth hacks which I can give you here is, you know, this is a long journey. So from now here, from research scientist to the, you know, CSO level, if you want to travel, it's a long journey. So you need patience. Okay. You, you have got here. Great. But once you want to reach to the CSO level, chief scientific officer level, you need a lot of patience, a lot of focus on paper publications and patents, wherever you get a chance, do it. Okay. Because that will help you definitely. But in, you know, peer reviewed journals, not in free journals. Now, after you become a research scientist, one after six, four or five years or six years, you get promoted to a lead scientist. What is the lead scientist? That person has to routinely manage large and multi-technique R&D. And he, he has now additional responsibility of navigating the regulatory framework, like, okay, whether this will be getting, this will get approved by the regulatory body or not, all that he has to debate, discuss and provide intelligence up upon. Now he has to also provide technical leadership to achieve desired results. So basically the lead scientist is responsible for all the activities of research scientists, associate scientists, ass assistant research associate, senior research associate, as well as juniors and interns. So it's a high level position. Education required will be a PhD with six years of experience or a postdoc with five years of experience. So that's the education required. Salary ranges starts at one lakh, it goes up to one lakh seventy thousand, adjusting to inflation. I'm talking about the numbers as on 2022. Now, the duration you stick to this particular position is five to seven years before you they promote you. And the growth hack, which I can give you here, is you really don't need a growth hack. Once you are here, once you have reached the lead scientist level, the growth will be on autopilot level unless you do some big mistake, unethical mistake, which generally doesn't happen. So you are an autopilot once you have become a lead scientist, because after this, you become a principal scientist. Now, here are eight pointers for you for principal scientists. What he or she does, work profile varies from company to company. As a principal scientist, you will be, you may be heading departments or you may be heading labs together. You, your job basically at any point in time will be to coordinate multiple teams. So you are not just working with one lead scientist, you're working with multiple lead scientists. Okay. So that's your job. You, your, your job also will be to train new researchers and, uh, you know, do performance reviews, act as, act as a source of knowledge for the lab. So he'll be generally on rounds and, you know, the education required will be PhD with eight or uh, eight to nine years of experience or postdoc with six years of experience. Now, the salary ranges from 2.2 lakhs to 7 lakhs as per ad adjusting as per inflation as on 2022. And at this position, you will have to stick from five to 10 years, depending on the growth of the company, growth of your project and growth of your department. So all that, uh, you know, things are, uh, things matter here. So if you're achieving your targets as a principal scientist, definitely you become a chief scientist. So what do you get as a chief scientist? Okay, this is the highest position before, you know, uh, uh, CEO level. So this is a chief scientific officer, we say our chief scientist, highest position, you'll be a part of the board, you'll be part of the policy and decision making company of the board, you will be developing budgets, approving budgets, managing multiple departments and multiple principal scientists, you will be coordinating various research, you should be, you would be paving the direction in which the company's research work should go in, you would be um, you know, working on multiple projects, which uh, are, uh, you know, future centric and uh, to reach this level, I should say you have to have a long term vision because this is the dream of every scientist to become a chief scientific officer. Now education, PhD with 12 years of experience, postdoc with 10 years of experience, all these are generalized experiences I'm saying, it can be less, it can be more depending on the company. If it's a startup, it can be five years also, okay? Now the salary which is offered is six lakhs to 10 lakh rupees per month. I'm talking about that's a crore. Okay, that's a crore, 1.2 crore rupees annual salary. And then duration at which you will stay here six to 10 years. Generally, people retire from this position. Now, this is how the industry works, guys. This is the entire uh, thing which I wanted to show you the ladder. So you start at intern, you grow up to chief scientist, okay? Depending on which company you are in, now, here is something which many students or many people think that, okay, what if I just, you know, I join a company as a scientist and I switch the job and be, uh, join another company, I will become a research scientist. No, it doesn't happen that way. Basically, wherever you go, please try to make, stick minimum of two years because in one year you learn things and another one year you apply things, you know, at least two years should be there and then you should switch. It makes sense. 
However, in exceptional cases, the growth is not at all there. There's no learning happening on the, in the job. Then definitely you can switch. So here is what I tried to, you know, teach all of you about the biotech career ladder. This is not like, okay, every company will stick to it 100%, but more or less 90%, they will stick to it. Now, one very important thing about this biotech career ladder, which I wanted to tell you is this biotech career ladder should act as an inspiration it should act as a motivation should act as a pathway for you okay it is not that this is hard and fast rule you can probably jump uh, faster than others in this career ladder so whatever experiences you saw probably it will be half for you depends on you so you know i should say that all power to you the knowledge is now in your hands put it to good use and don't lose hope don't lose motivation the industry does hire people who are talented the industry does respect and support people who are willing to take the company to the next level. It's a very simple phenomena. What is a company? A company is a small secret. A company is a small secret. They're developing a secret which want they want to create a dent into the universe. They want probably develop a vaccine or a gene therapy or a whatever, but they want to help, right? So if you are able to contribute to the company, definitely the company is going to come back to you and reward no matter wherever you are. However, there can be some internal company politics and stuff like that, which will discourage you. But at the same time, remember, gossip will not help you. Your work is your identity. Focus on that. Whether you are an intern or research scientist or a postdoc who is, uh, you, you know, slated to become a principal scientist, no matter which level you are, just focus. You're definitely going to make it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was wonderful interacting with all of you. I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay subscribed. Any comments, put them down. I'll personally reply to you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.